All right, chemistry students, welcome to your first online lecture for the notes. So I'm going to go through the notes. Um, I posted the pre-lecture notes on Monday. So ideally, you don't have to do this, but ideally to make it kind of like how we've done it in class, you'll copy the pre-lecture notes before you watch the video. And then as you watch the lecture, you can fill in your notes as you go. Uh, but that's totally up to you. But again, you want to keep uh, your notes still in your notebook because you will have your open note quiz at the end of the week. Okay, so here we're going to start a new unit. This is unit eight, chemical equations. Um, this is just our title slide so you can kind of see where we're headed this unit. I'll come back to this little diagram. But um, in this unit, what we're going to be able to do is use our chemical formulas, which we need to remember how to do that. We're going to combine those and write balanced chemical equations to represent a chemical change that occurs. Okay. Um, so a chemical change involves the breaking of chemical bonds. And we've learned about chemical bonds. Um, and so we'll be breaking those bonds and forming new bonds in a chemical reaction. That's the definition of a chemical reaction. And we represent this using a balanced chemical equation. So you'll be seeing those a lot like we just did in the title slide. Um, they obey what's called the law of conservation of mass, uh, which means the mass of everything on the left side of the reaction is going to be equal to the mass of everything on the right side. So kind of before and after, the mass will be the same. Uh, similar to in math, you know, both sides of the equal sign have to be the same. Uh, that's, that, that'll be the same in a chemical reaction. Uh, your products and your reactants will have to be equal. So just like in math, the equal sign puts both sides equal. In chemistry, we just use an arrow instead of an equal sign. Um, but what this means is that the mass of your reactants, that's the stuff on the left side of the reaction, will be equal to the mass of the products, which is all the stuff on the right side of the reaction. Right? And what this really means for you when you're doing problems is that when you count up the number of each atom, you need to have the same number of each atom on both sides of the arrow. Similar, like in math, it would be both sides of, um, of the equal sign. So actually what I want to do is go back to that title slide um, and kind of think about what that means for this. So we have down here um, is what's called a balanced chemical equation, and you'll probably recognize some of these formulas, right? Like we have oxygen is O2, this is carbon dioxide, CO2, but you'll notice there's also these bigger numbers in front, which are coefficients, and it tells you how many of them we need. So this slide has a really nice visual representation of what's happening as well. So CH4 looks like this, so the black one's the carbon, and then the four white ones are hydrogen. You have two oxygens, and remember oxygen is diatomic, so you have O2 and O2, but we need two of those. And the reason we need two of those is because when we look at the products over here, we're going to make carbon dioxide, which has one carbon and two oxygens, um, and water, which is oxygen and two hydrogens. But you'll notice, remember, everything on the left has to be the same as everything on the right. So when you go through and count it up, it should all match. So like if we were to count the carbons, I see one carbon here on the left side, and I see one carbon here on the right side. All right, hydrogens, I have four of those white hydrogens. And over here, I have four white hydrogens, and then I have four red oxygens, and I have one, two, three, four red oxygens. So that was me looking at the picture and doing that. But down here, you have to be able to do the same thing uh, with the formulas, with the chemical formulas. So we would say, okay, I have one carbon here, one carbon here, I have four hydrogens here. So I have two times two gives me four hydrogens here. And then I have two times two is four oxygens. I have two oxygens here. And then I have two here, which gives me a total of four oxygens. So that's the same as having four over here. Okay, um, this is honestly just gonna take tons and tons of practice. And that's what I will be giving you. Um, so the notes for today, actually, all I'm gonna do is go through hints for balancing. So it's kind of like going through steps, but some of them aren't necessarily steps. Some of them are just, hey, sometimes when you have this kind of tricky situation, this is a good um, kind of uh, tip for this type of balancing, this type of reaction. Okay. So again, it's not necessarily steps. Some of the ones at the beginning are steps, um, but later on it's just some, some hints. So as you go through your homework and as you practice, you might need to apply some or a few or all of these to a specific problem. 
Okay. Um, so the first one is a step. The first thing you'll need to do is make sure you have the correct chemical formulas for the reactants and the products. Um, if you don't get the right chemical formulas, a lot of times it will be impossible to balance. So that's the first thing you need to do is make sure all of your formulas are correct. So here it says hydrogen and chlorine combine to make hydrochloric acid. So what we'll do is we need to go through and make sure we know all the formulas and know how to represent the balanced chemical equation. So hydrogen, and I think it'll come up here on the slide, remember the diatomic elements. Um, remember Brinkelhoff or Super 7, this is really important here. I told you it would haunt you for the rest of your chemistry career. You have to remember the diatomic elements. Hydrogen is one of them. So when you write the formula for hydrogen, it's not just H. It's actually H2. So you need to remember that um, when you write your balanced chemical equation. Okay. Um, the word and, when you see that, that's going to be a plus sign in our balanced chemical equation. Chlorine. What's special about chlorine? It's also diatomic, so its formula is going to be Cl2. Hopefully you remember that. Combine to make, so there are certain phrases like this. Combine to make means now you're switching from reactants to products. All right, So that's where you put the arrow. Hydrochloric acid, Ooh, this goes back to our acid formulas. Remember hydroic acid means it came from chloride. So chloride is Cl minus, and then you add the H's to make it an acid. So the formula is going to be HCl. Um, acid naming was at the end of unit four, if you forgot and you need to review that. Okay. So this is what our um, correct formulas are, and then we would need to balance it. Okay. Um, the first thing I want to do, though, is show you visually what these formulas look like. Okay. So if we look at that, Right? We Again, we want to make sure everything on the left is going to balance everything on the right. So you can see here that we have two H's, um, but on this side we only have one H. And on here we have two CL's, but over here we only have one CL. Um, so there is a simple solution for this one. Let me think about it for a second. Think about what we might want to add to our picture here. Um, and the solution Oh, here, this is step two. Sorry, I forgot the order of the notes here. Step two then says to balance the elements or polyatomic ions one at a time by adding coefficients. Okay, and again, uh, this is a really important thing. As we add coefficients, which are the numbers that would go in front here to tell us how many of each we had, um, we cannot change the chemical formulas, right? Like we just decided chlorine, or we didn't decide, but chlorine's formula is Cl2, right? We cannot change that. It's like changing how you would spell your name. That's not fine for me to just say, oh, now we're going to spell your name differently, right? Chlorine is always Cl2, so we can't change that. Um, so what we want to do to make this equation balanced is we want to make sure the reactants and the products are going to be on the, the same, equal on both sides. Um, so from our picture, we can see that we're going to need to add another HCl. And now that makes it balanced because we have the two H's here, we have two H's here, we have two Cl's here, we have two Cl's here. So now we need to make sure we can show that in our balanced chemical equation, not just with the pictures. So if we added another HCl here, um, what we do is we show that by putting the coefficient 2 in front of HCl. So the big 2 out in front, the coefficient, means how many HCl's you have, right? So here's one HCl, here's two HCl's, okay? Um, over here, we don't need a coefficient because all we've used is one hydrogen. Hydrogen is H2, so we used one of those, and we used one chlorine. Um, so in chemistry, a lot of times we leave out the one, as you've kind of learned, right? Um, so it's implied that there's an invisible one here, okay? We just leave that blank. If you want to put a one, that's okay, but usually we just leave that blank, right? So it means that you have one of these and one of these, and it produces two of these, okay? The other way you could have looked at it is say, okay, I have two H's here. If I only have one here, I need to put a big two out in front. So now this two affects both, oops, sorry. The two affects both the H and the Cl. Okay, so by putting that two there, it affects both the H and the Cl. So now I have two H's and I have two Cl's. 
and that helps me balance the left. All right. Um, these next slides are just more like hints, so you might not use them in all of the questions, but they will come up a lot, especially this one. So number three says to treat polyatomic ions as chunks. So this is one of the reasons why we spent so much time going over the ions and the polyatomic ions and trying to memorize them, is because that's going to make your life easier when you look at these balanced chemical equations if you can recognize those polyatomic ions. Um, for example, here, uh, we have a lot going on in these formulas, and if you can start picking out the polyatomic ions, I'll show you why that's a lot easier. Um, but as we go through and balance this one, again, do not change the chemical formulas. That's why I put the flames up there, right? Do not change the chemical formulas again, because that's like how you spell its name, um, so you're not allowed to change that. So as we look at this chemical equation here, Let's go through and just take inventory as it is now, look at the polyatomic ions we have, and see if we can figure out how many we have of each. Okay, so starting with right here, SO4. Does anyone recognize this polyatomic ion? If not, you can look at your ions list. You can always use that. So when I see that SO4, um, I know that that's sulfate. So I know that four is part of its name. Um, it's not, it's telling me it has four oxygens, but that chunk, SO4, is sulfate, and I have one of those here. So again, we're going to chunk them. And what's special to notice here is that the SO4 on the left side, on the reactant side, I also see an SO4 on the product side on the right. So that's going to allow me to kind of treat them as a chunk. Instead of breaking it up into S and O, I can just say, okay, I have one sulfate on the left, and how many sulfates do we see on the right? It's a little bit trickier. Remember, the 4 is part of its formula. So how many SO4s do we have? Well, we have 3 because of this little 3 here. That 3 gets distributed into the parentheses, right? So it means that we have 3 of everything in here. So that would be 3 sulfates. All right? And then there's another polyatomic ion in this reaction, NO3. So NO3 is nitrate. So right here, as it's written, we have three nitrates because of that three there. And then we see nitrate again up here on the product side. So again, we can chunk that because it's not changing. And on this side, we only have one nitrate, okay? Because that three is part of its name. So NO3 is nitrate. So once you have that, you can start balancing. So again, um, this is going to take a lot of practice, but balancing is just a big back and forth game. So you want to start somewhere, and I'll have clues on where's a good place to start. Um, but in this one, really, we can start with, let's say, let's start with sulfates, because those were the first ones we talked about. And you'll see how this plays out. It's going to be a lot of back and forth, okay? So we have one sulfate on this side, and we have three on the other side. So think about what coefficient needs to go here to give us three sulfates. Hopefully you said three, right? Because that number multiplies whatever you have here. So now instead of one sulfate, now I have three sulfates by putting that three there. And here's what you wanna do. Once you put that three, you're gonna follow it. So not only does that give you three sulfates, what is it going to do to the sodiums here? Remember, they multiply. So initially you had two sodiums, but now you have that three in front, so it's going to be three times two. You have six sodiums here. Okay. So look over on the product side. How many sodiums do we have over here? We only have one. So what coefficient should we put here so that we get six sodiums? Well, it's going to be a six, right? So see, it's a lot of back and forth. So now that we put that six there, it fixes our sodiums but it's going to change our nitrates. So now we have six nitrates because we put the coefficient six there. So by having six nitrates here, we need to make sure it balances with the number of nitrates over here. Initially, we had three nitrates. We want six, right? So what should we put here? Remember, they multiply. Don't put six, that's gonna give you too many. You wanna get six, you already have three, so we'll put a two there. Two times the three we already had will give us six nitrates. And how many aluminums will it give us? It'll give us two, right? So let's make sure we have two aluminums on the other side, and we do. All right, that's what's satisfying about balancing, is it should work out. So you're going to pick where to start. 
You're going to see what happens as you manipulate those numbers. You need to follow them. Because once you put a coefficient here, like when we put the 3, it fixes the sulfates, but it also changes the sodium. So we need to make sure we fix that. And you'll keep going back and forth and back and forth until it works. Okay? So that's one clue. Treating polyatomic ions as chunks, and we kind of practice going, playing that back and forth game. Okay? So moving on to number 4, this is another tip. Start with elements that are present in the least number of substances. So again, this is just something that a good clue of where to start. You can really start anywhere, but sometimes there are better places to start. For example, this reaction kind of has a lot going on, and you might see the same element popping up a lot, right? What do you see a lot of? There's two that appear in a lot of places, right? So we have hydrogen appears in three different things. And then there's another one, oxygen. Oxygen appears in three different things. That means don't start with that. It's complicated. Start with something easy. So you have two good options to start with, right? Nitrogen or carbon. Notice nitrogen is just on one thing on the left, one thing on the right. Carbon also just on one thing on the left, one thing on the right. So those are both good places to start. And you could start with either. Why don't we start with nitrogen, okay? So again, be careful with all your parentheses here. But we have um, nitrogen here, it's inside of this parentheses that has a 2 on the outside. So that means you have two nitrogens on your reactant side. Okay. So if we go to our product side, how many nitrogens do we have right here? We only have one. Be careful with that 3. Remember, the 3 is only affecting the H there, not the N. So we have one N. We have two on this side. So let's put a 2 right here to fix that. Okay, and again, let's not deal with the H's because those look confusing. So let's go to carbon because we said that one would be easy as well. So we have one carbon here. What about on the other side? One carbon. So that one's done actually. So that's really nice. You don't have to do anything. Remember, we leave out the ones. Um, now, unfortunately, we have to tackle the confusing things. So let's look at oxygen first. So we have three oxygens here. And you have to total up all the oxygens from this side. So there's one here. That's one oxygen. There's two here. So two oxygens plus one oxygen. That gives you three oxygens on this side, which balances with the three on this side. So that's good. What about hydrogens? This one's confusing. Look at this hydrogen here on the reactant side. How many H's? Four times two gives you eight H's. So then we got to make sure that our H's on the other side match. So we have 3 times 2 is 6 H's here, plus 2 H's here, so that's 8, and that works out. So everything is balanced. All it needed was that 2 right there. Okay, so this tip just kind of gives you a good starting point. But again, you could have started other places and gotten the same answer. There's not one route to go. And that's what's hard with balancing, is you might do it a little bit differently than your friend or than I do, um, but we should get the same answer, okay? Um, and this last one is actually a tip on kind of that. If you do it a different way than I do and we get slightly different answers, sometimes this is why. Sometimes this is what happens. Sometimes students start balancing too much because they're having too much fun, right? It's so fun to balance. And you go past the right answer. So one thing you need to do when you're done is check that all the... Um, elements or all your atoms are completely balanced and in the lowest whole number ratios possible. And what I mean by that is here we have a balanced chemical equation. So look, let's just make sure it works out. We have eight hydrogens here. We have eight hydrogens here. We have four oxygens here. And we have four oxygens here, right? So you're like, yeah, I did it. Perfect. Okay. The problem is, notice four, four, two, those need to be reduced, okay? You can actually divide all of those by two and get smaller uh, numbers, right? You can get the simplest ratio, which is actually going to be two, two, and one. And remember, we leave out the one, okay? So make sure that's kind of like a last step. And lastly, this is a really tricky one. Um, if you're having trouble balancing, Sometimes this is the issue. Sometimes an issue is being caused um, by a diatomic element. So here's what we're going to do. Um, first thing, remember, start with 
Where should we start? What's a good starting place, right? One of the other tips told you where you could start. We want to start with something that's in the least amount of stuff. So like it's just in one reactant and one product. So might, what might be a good place to start? Hopefully you said either carbon or hydrogen. So I'm going to start with carbon here. So I have five carbons here. I have one here. So I'm going to put a five there. All right. And then we said hydrogen would be a good easy one as well. So let's do hydrogen. I have 10 hydrogens here. I have two here. So what number could we put in front to give us 10? That would multiply by two. Five, so five times two is 10, all right? Now to do oxygen, we have two oxygens on this side. And over here, we gotta add some up. So we have five times two is 10, plus the five there is 15. Can we make this 15? No, we have a problem, and we're always going to have a problem because by having that 2 there, this has to be an even number. So we can't make a number like 15. So the trick to solve that is to double all of the coefficients that you've already put into place. Okay, So here I have an invisible coefficient of number 1, right? So let's double that, turn it into a 2. This is the one we're trying to figure out, so let's go back to that. Here, we're going to double this 5, turn it into a 10. Double this 5, turn it into a 10. And now let's see where we're at with our oxygens. You don't need to double check everything else because you've just doubled it all. It should still balance, right? But our oxygens we need to fix. So now we have 10 times 2 is 20 oxygens here, plus 10 more oxygens here. So we have 30 total oxygens on the product side. So how can we make this 30? What could you put in front? What coefficient? That's going to be multiplied by 2 to make 30. Well, that will be 15. All right? So that one's really tricky, but it does come up. Okay? So now that we've gone through all the hints, what you should do is try to work through the homework assignment. You can refer back to this video. You can refer back to your notes that you were hopefully copying down as we went through this video. Um, and there are also tutorial videos. There's two tutorial videos for that homework assignment that I would highly encourage you to watch while you do the homework assignment. So that way you're getting your homework done as you are kind of reinforcing the tips and tricks to balance. It will take a lot of practice to get this stuff. So don't get frustrated. Just keep um, trying and trying and try to find as many, go through as many examples as you can. All right. Email me if you have questions. Good luck.